Hello and welcome to Bristol Reptile Emporium's YouTube channel. I'm Gail and I'm Michelle and today we are going to talk about praying mantises. So we do have one here and as you can see it's quite small so you might not be able to see it so we will have some close-ups and some shots uh, throughout the film. So Michelle first of all can you tell us what um, is this? And uh, so this particular individual species of mantis is an African um, mantis. However, there are loads of different species of mantis, and I mean loads. They're found all over the place, loads of different continents of origin. Um, they get to loads of different size variants. This is one of the bigger species. Um, so this isn't fully grown yet, so it's still got a few molts to do to get it up to its adult size. But some of the smaller species um, would be fully grown, not a lot bigger than this. So there's lots and lots of variation when it comes to praying mantises. And we're not gonna look at any one species in particular, although we've got the African here. Some of the other clips that we're gonna show you are gonna contain some different species that we've got. Um, but it's just a bit of a general overview in regards to them and just give you a bit more uh, broad information. They are very popular pets. Um, and there's lots of reasons why they're popular. I mean, they're an amazing invert. They truly are, they're fantastic. Um, but we thought we'd just give you a little bit of an insight into them as a group uh, of species, just so that you've got it as a reference point, really. Okay, that's great. So how long do these guys live? So typically, typically, you'll be lucky to get just over a year out of an average mantis, which a lot of people may gasp and think, oh my God, that's not very long mm. at all. But it depends on the individual. That could be more convenient for some people because mm. a lot of the reps and the inverts that we keep have got quite long lifespans. She's just cleaning her leg at the minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so having a longer mm. lifespan, obviously, it's a big tie. It's a commitment to mm. that animal. And obviously our lifestyles and what we're going through at different times, it, they change. And we sometimes we don't know what's going to go on. So we'll take an animal on with the best intention of being able to look after it for its entirety. And obviously stuff can happen and it can affect that. But with some of the inverts, their lifestyle can be more manageable. So especially for um, people at, at different life points themselves. So if you're a teenager, and you're not sure what you're gonna be doing in the next couple of years, or you know, if you're a young adult and you're not sure where life's gonna take you, a species like this may be more suitable for you. Mm -hmm. It's still interactive. You still get positive feedback from looking after and the care of the animal, but you haven't got the commitment of the time scale that some of the other animals require. Yeah, that's very true. And what sort of size will they get to? So as I say, it varies massively. So this is great because it gives us variation on housing and what we can keep them in. So some of the smaller species could be kept in something, uh, you know, something in the region of um, 20 by 20 by 20 centimetres, mm -hmm. which is a really small commitment to space, Yeah, which is fantastic. A bigger species may need something with a similar footprint, so 20 centimetres, but a lot more height to enable it to go through its processes mm. and mould out without any problems. So we could be looking at something like 20 by 20 by 30, um, and there is loads of variations as to the type of style of um, housing that we use. So some people will use glass, some people acrylic, um, and it, again, it's a good price point when it comes to housing as well. It means that we haven't got to cater for massive enclosures. Mm. Um, so it makes it more convenient for some individuals. Yeah, absolutely. And what type of food do they eat? So mantises are predatory insects. So that's cool. It doesn't matter who you are and what you like, anything that actively hunts something else is amazing. <laughs> and these guys are really ambitious as well. So you think this tiny little insect is not gonna take much on. But if I popped a cricket in, which was half its size, it would nail it in no problem at really? all. Really? Wow. As long as they're hungry, they're going to take on food really ambitious with its mass. Obviously, we do need to take consideration. So if we've got a smaller species, we will be feeding smaller food items. Mm -hmm. um, so a little bit of common sense has to come into play when we're feeding, because at the end of the day, we can't put a massive cricket in with a tiny no. mantis. There is always the chance a cricket could win. But at the same time, this individual will comfortably take on a medium-sized cricket, no problem at all. Right, okay. The demand on feeding is quite low as well. So the more we feed a mantis, the faster it's gonna grow, and that's gonna shorten its lifespan. 
And that's the same across the board, basically. But if we regulate the food, so they're not getting too much in one go, we'll have that good year out of a mantis without any problem at all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the big thing with praying mantises that a lot of people don't think about, is we think about the food that we're putting in, but we don't think about hydration. So mantises need to be hydrated. They get dehydrated exactly the same as we would. So we need to give them the opportunity to drink. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people worry with um, insects and water. Obviously, their bodies process everything a little bit differently to us in regards to how they, they breathe and things like that. So they worry about them drowning. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't put a massive container of water in. Some people will use a pipette directly to um, a mantis of this size or bigger, and they'll give it a drop of water and it'll drink directly from a pipette. Um, so I've even seen people with teaspoons and they've had a little bit of honey mixed into the water that they're giving them and they'll just give it to them directly again and they'll drink off of the teaspoon. So a mantis this used to be an interactive with will be quite helpful and it will aid us. Mm -hmm. um, it really does depend how much you do with your mantis as to what it will let you get on with it. Some of them are just like, no, please don't. And they're just like, no, leave me. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got to get to know your animal the same as you would with any other species. Um, So as you can see, we can handle these guys, but how often can we handle them? So we can handle these guys almost daily. Um, that's not a problem. And the frequency, the amount of time that you would handle them for will vary depending on how big the animal is and um, how long, how much you know the toleration of that animal, if that mm. makes sense. So exactly the same as all other species. Some mantises love being handled, some mantises not so keen. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So we've already spoken briefly about enclosures and sort of like the size and they don't need massive enclosures, quite small, so, you know, it's quite good. What about sort of like light and heat and that type of thing for it? Yeah, so when you are looking at enclosures, the most important thing is that the animal has enough space to drop out of a molt. Okay, so it's all about height for them when it comes to molting. So when you've got a small species, it's not too much of a problem. But when you've got a bigger species, you need to make sure you've got almost double, if not three times the height, so that as they drop out of the mole, they've got plenty of room to move and don't get stuck against the bottom because mm. they can dry. She's actually biting my finger at the moment. So um, that's just a, a nibble there. <laughs> <laughs> so when they molt, they're quite soft. If they molt out and come in contact with the bottom of the enclosure, they can dry in funky positions and you have a misshaped mantis. Oh. So depending on the species and its country of origin, that is going to affect the heat and the level of temperature that is required. So obviously when you're doing your research into your species or you're going into a shop, speak to them about that. There may be a case that your household temperature might not be high enough and you might need an additional heat source, mm -hmm. um, but that will vary species to species. Okay, great. And what would you have on the bottom? Any substrate or anything? Yeah, so some owners will use things like cocoa fibre, um, or they may even use things like a orchid bark or something like that in the bottom of the enclosure, which is absolutely fine. Alternatively, some individuals may use nothing at all and just have a bare bottom, or they may use tissue. Oh, okay. She's trying to bite you again. Mm. Mm. Lovely. <laughs> And you spoke about sort of like providing water by sort of like a pipette or like by a spoon. Do you put a water bowl in or anything like that or do you leave it out? Most people don't or if they do they may use something the size of like um, a very small bowl equivalent to a bottle top or something along that sort of level. Mm -hmm. um, but some owners will just uh, maintain humidity through spraying the enclosure and may not have residual water and again that will vary species to species. So some mantises like to be drier than others so you need to check to the individual species right okay Great. is there anything else that we need to provide or any other information do we need any plants or hide in the enclosure so they generally don't hide um, if you have foliage within the enclosure that will help they'll blend into that and it makes them feel more secure they do need um, decor that allows them to drop out and molt from. Uh, so some people will have mesh on the top of the enclosure, which they can use to grip onto and drop out of the molt. Mm -hmm. So the molt is always the trickiest point when keeping any species of mantis and all the decor is going to help with this. So some individuals will use a thin branch, which they can drop down off of that branch and molt from. Um, it might be a piece of artificial foliage, your variation as to what your enclosure looks like 
like is really down to you um, and also again just check in that species requirement so if you've got a mantis that spends a little bit more time on the floor you'll have slightly different decor to one that positions higher up and there are a couple of species that do spend more time on the floor Thank you for watching Bristol Reptile Emporium's YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and we look forward to seeing you next week for another video. Bye! Bye!